when oxygen gives away its electron in turn it will develop a positive charge on itself and we will have this there's a plus charge on this oxygen because this oxygen has given its electron to the orbital of this carbon the negative charge the positive charge of this nitrogen has gone so we have this now there will be an intramolecular acid base reaction because this nitrogen is more basic than this oxygen though so this this proton will jump from this oxygen to this nitrogen resulting in formation of NS3 plus now looking at NS3 plus your senses must tell you that there's a good living group here about to leave we have seen the list of good living groups and NS3 happens to be one of them ammonia is a small stable molecule that tries to leave the substrate because small stable molecules tries to have their independent existence and they tries to leave the substrate now when ammonia leaves the substrate it will leave as neutral ammonia and this NS3 is having a plus charge here so what it will do is it will take away the electron of this bond this bond has two electrons one of the electron is of ni is nitrogen's own electron and one of the electron is of carbon so when nitrogen takes away its electron that is not going to increase any negative charge on this on nitrogen so when nitrogen takes away the second electron of the bond that means the electron of carbon the nitrogen gains one negative charge on this and that neutralizes the positive charge already present on nitrogen so both the electron of that bond will go away with nitrogen making nitrogen neutral again that will result in formation of plus charge on carbon so whenever slight electronic density slight electronic deficiency will start to develop on this carbon simultaneously the electron present here will come to form a bond between carbon and oxygen that means this electron will go into the orbital of carbon and then a pi bond will be formed between carbon and oxygen this process happens simultaneously as NH3 abstracts electron from this bond making itself neutral this carbon will start to become electron deficient and this oxygen will start to supply its electron so when this NH3 has taken away all the electron this OH has given its whole of the electron so when this NH3 is gone we have a formation of C double bond O and when oxygen does it it has to have a plus charge on it and NH3 will be gone and this will become neutral just by removal of H plus from here any anything in the system present water uh, any other base will take away this H plus making this C double bond O neutral and ammonia gas will be released off if there are more of H plus in the system it will exist as NH4 plus otherwise it will exist as NH3 so the final product here is this ketone one of them is coming from Grignard region that is represented represented as R dash and one of the R group is the same as we had in cyanide so this resulted in the formation of a ketone so suppose I have methyl cyanide and I want to prepare acetone out of this now the structure of acetone is this now as I can see in from the reaction this R group that you have in cyanide finally remains one of the R group in ketone so this R group that we have in cyanide is already there in ketone this carbon on the cyanide turns into C double bond O so this carbon on the cyanide will turn into C double bond O and I have one more R group present here now this R has to come from Grignard reagent so the Grignard reagent that you have will be taking to convert the cyanide into acetone will be CH3MGX so in, when we complete this complete set of reaction will do some sort of conversions that will be very useful in understanding and developing our insight into these reactions so in whenever you study any reaction what you have to take into account and what ultimately what you have to remember is what is the substrate in the reaction 
what is the reagent in the reaction what is the final product of the reaction and given the substrate and the reagent how would be I be able to write directly the product of the reaction without visualizing recapitulating whole of the mechanisms through which the product is formed so this have to be the vantage point from where you have to look at the reactions otherwise solving the problem fast will not be your cup of tea you have to practice this and you have to be concerned with remembering this as I as, as we have discussed here suppose this is a cyanide and this is a desired ketone then you must quickly able to be solve what will be the R part in the Grignard reagent so this analysis has to be done in every reactions this is a reagent this is a substrate this is a product what must be the reagent if this is a substrate this is the reagent what must be the product how you will directly quickly write the product just by looking at reagent and the substrate because in exams there will be many many conversions so you don't have to do the mechanism for all of them this is for our understanding this is for our conviction now in exam you have to do it directly so you have to solve the problems and you have to look at the reactions from this point of view and you have to remember them so we, s uh, we have completed the major reactions of Grignard reagent now we are moving towards solving certain problems to to gain an a depth in understanding and and to make these reactions to come on our fingertips Suppose I have A. This A is any substrate. I don't know what this is. I have to find this out. I have added casein to this and this gets converted to B. B is another compound. When I add CH3MGX, I have given the R part of Grignard reagent. When I react CH3MGX with B followed by hydrolysis, I result in formation of butanone. So you have to find A and you have to find B. Now this is a very tiny small conversion. Later on we'll be looking for bigger conversions as we read as we learn more of the reactions. This is a very very small version of a conversion. So in this conversion what you have to do is you have to first of all find B out of the given final product because you can't find A unless we find B. So B look at B. B when you are reacting B with a Grignard reagent followed by hydrolysis you are getting acetone. Now at the end of the year when we look when you when you solve any problem then your mind has to run through all the reactions that you have done in this course and it has to run through really fast and it will be able to run through when you have practiced enough in organic look organic is a is a kind of subject that can fetch you laurels it uh, you'll be able to solve the organic paper very fast if you have practiced enough you don't have to do any calculations you just have to apply the analytical skill that you have developed you have to apply the concepts that you have to learn and it goes off very fast I, I tell you when when you have practiced enough of the problems in organic you look at the reagent and the given product and quickly very very quickly you will be able to s zero down to the final product that will be given in the option so um, it, it works out very very fast it's not like physical the weather where you have to have mathematical portion it's not like math it's not like physics it goes off very fast and organic pays you off very well if you respect and learn it with it, uh, really uh, if with interest so here we have two butanone now this reaction is a reaction of a cyanide with Grignard reagent because in the last reaction that we have seen we have seen that when Grignard reagent reacts with cyanide followed by hydrolysis you have a generation of carbonyl compound now here we have a carbonyl compound here we have Grignard reagent here we have hydrolysis now this got to be a cyanide so B must be a cyanide this you must tell with conviction when you have learned the reactions and it becomes very fast 
and we also know that one of the R group in the ketone that is formed comes from Grignard reagent. In the Grignard reagent, I have CS3. Here, I find CS3. That means this R group will come from the cyanide. So the cyanide would be something like this. So this R part in the cyanide will be the same as the other R part of the ketone. So this R part will be ethyl from the given product, and this C double bond O will be reg will be generated from this C double bond C triple bond N. So the cyanide must be a cyanide of three carbon. It may must be ethane nitrile or propane cyanide. So this cyanide will get converted to C double bond O, and this R part must be already attached to this cyanide. So like this, we have identified what must be B. So B must be ethane nitrile or propane cyanide. So once we have identified B, we have to then zero down to A. Now here I can see CN, and I can see that KCN is being added on A, and I'm getting B. That means in A you must not have CN, and CN has been added on this substrate as a result of a reaction with KCN. So what you must instead have is you must have this branch, and you must have a leaving group here, who will leave to facilitate the incoming, uh, to facilitate this incoming cyanide group. So we have seen this reaction in the chapter of alkyl halide, where you have Rx, and where you have a nucleophile. And when this nucleophile attacks from backside, this Rx, this X minus being a very very stable leaving group leaves out. So you have R and U. The similar kind of reaction we see here. We are adding KCN. That means CN minus is acting as a nucleophile. So nucleophile will come in. So you must have a very good, very very stable leaving group like Rx. So tentatively, I will be tempted to think that A must be Rx. So uh, I'll consider A to be Rx, and this R part in A will be the same as R part in this RCN. And the R part in this RCN we have identified as ethyl. So A must be ethyl halide. So I will write A as ethyl halide. This X may be Cl BRI, where this KCN will replace that Cl BRI and get inserted into it, forming B. So this is how you have to find out these products in conversions. Later on, this conversion will uh, will will grow very long and very very bulky so what you have to do is you have to keep in mind all the kind of reactions that you are studying because in organic all these reactions are interrelated so there will be extension of these reactions something of the reactions will be used in the further reactions so you have to you have to keep all of them ready prepared on your fingertips as we move on so this will prepare the reaction of Grignard reagent we have seen the reactions of Grignard reagent and their conversions so we stop here thank you very much